Hi guys, welcome back to another overthrow video. Thank you as always for tuning in. Today I thought I would go and give an overview of what my current teaching and methodology is on the backhand throw. Overthrow has been around for two and a half years or so now and I've taught over 2,000 lessons. So you can imagine that during that time, I've learned a lot and I'm continuing to learn a lot. We are going to be pumping out a bunch of videos on teaching the backhand. You're gonna see the beginning playlist gone because how I teach beginners has now changed and improved. Just wanted to give you an overview so that you could have my current thoughts on everything backhand wise while we are pumping out these topical videos on what you're gonna see here. So you're gonna have probably a bunch of questions about specifics of each thing that I talk about. This is not meant to be comprehensive by any means, but just to give you the macro picture. Also, the other thing that this video is gonna do hopefully is let you know where I stand on each of these topics so I can stop getting the messages about what do you think about so-and-so? What do you think about so-and-so teaching this? What do you? You'll know where I stand after this video on most of those topics, hopefully. If not, of course, I know you'll drop the questions down below or hit us up on Instagram. Without further ado, let's get into the backhand overview. Okay, first off, walk up. The walk up's main priority is to add momentum into the throw. You should be walking up or running up as quickly as you possibly can, if you can transfer that momentum through your brace upwards, which is why you probably should not be walking as quickly as you possibly can. Our walk up is directionally towards our line, every step building momentum towards our throwing line. One specific here, I do not think that you should be walking up and intentionally offsetting this way, staggering this way. It's gonna lock your hips out of the shot. Doing that might give you some lower back, maybe some knee issues. A lot of you might be finding that it adds extra torque. Be careful. I think instead, if I walk up directionally towards you and take my last step sideways and take a side step here, and at the same time, coil my shoulders and my hips, you will see that I have created a stagger. So in real time, step, 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 step. Here we go. Once this left foot is weighted and your right foot is weightless, we begin our coil, which creates our stagger. So that's the first thing. Just really quickly, these rain jackets are only on pre-order for one more week from the airing of this video. If you want to support the channel, you need a rain jacket. These are very sturdy. We did a review of them in our last video. You can check that out if you want. You don't have to check that out, just buy it. We'll be very grateful. Let us know you bought it and then we'll show our gratitude by responding to your comment with love and affection. That alone makes it worth it, right? Anyways, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Speaking of coil, what is coil? How do you do it? When do you do it? The coil happens once you start bearing weight, so we're side on here, if I'm throwing this direction, once this left leg starts bearing your weight, you start turning your back towards the target. That is coil. That's getting your shoulders back, and your hips will go back a little bit as well, right? But your shoulders and your hips are not back together here. You are not back pedaling or walking backwards here. There's no shoulder to hip separation, no coil, no load, therefore very weak. So what we want to do is, again, once this starts bearing weight, it's my left step as a righty, your right step as a lefty, and then you spend the entirety of this last step, this last stride, coiling your shoulders and waiting for this front foot to hit. This is where we start getting into current conversations about back leg disc golf or front leg disc golf. What do you do with this? When you coil, you're going to be loading this back hip, there will be a stretch here from this hip because your shoulders will go past it. And so your shoulders mobility will pass the hips mobility. And that's when you begin loading this back hip during this step. We are simply waiting for this front foot to hit and we are waiting for all of our pressure or all of our weight. We weight shift from the back foot, to the front foot. So that would be a weight shift or a pressure shift. My pressure is on my left foot. And as I go this way, my pressure is now on my right foot. Small distinction, weight is stacked vertically. So I'm saying pressure because I don't want you to think that you're oh, like literally on top of your back foot. 
and then you go literally on top of your front foot. Instead, like if you were to slide across your living room floor, that would be pressure on my front foot, that initial slide, but my weight is dispersed behind my foot or is not directly above it. So I can be balanced with all the pressure on this foot and balance is very important. Now onto the brace. The brace happens with that weight transfer or pressure transfer to the front foot. It is where we de-weight the back leg, similar to that sliding analogy. And now this front leg is weight bearing and this one is weightless. We do not twist this back hip or this back knee in to the front foot. Instead, when we go to transfer our weight into this front leg, this foot again becomes weightless. And then once we transfer this weight shift here causes, you'll see right here, some rotation, but it's not rotation causing the brace. It is weight shift causing rotation like this. And this foot I can pick up. And now my hips are forward and my arm moves forward to this throw out, which is very important here. Weight shift. And now you see that this is weight bearing. And then this is a pocket. This is deep pocket. We wanna keep our hand on the back of the disc as long as possible. Get the disc traveling forward for as long as possible before this throw out. You need a separation here. We are not using this back shoulder or back hand to rotate forward here and then get in this position. This would be over rotation. Instead, when we brace this left arm and this right arm both come in tight, this left leg slides forward as a counterbalance. We go as long, as deep into the pocket as possible before this extension and then follow through. Last piece on the back leg, it's not, again, not rotating, but as we go forward directionally and we stop on this front foot, it's going to slide forward with the left arm and with the right arm. And then we stay tight and then throw out from there. So that is a very brief synopsis of the backhand as I see it now. Again, I know you guys are gonna have questions. No, that we are going to be putting out a video a week here. One video a month will be dedicated to Mikey Madness. So enjoy those. If you can't wait for the extra information on each of these pieces, then you need to get in a private lesson with me. You can do that via Patreon, which is in the link in the description below. If you don't, you're just gonna have to wait. All right, friends, peace out. Thanks for supporting the channel. Bye.